Losing people is just a part of life. But some deaths of famous people go unnoticed because of little to no media coverage, or you probably didn't even know they died because some of them passed way before their time. Here are some actors you probably didn't realize passed away. Most people recognize Michael Telefero as the guy who knocked out Eddie Murphy in the 1999 prison movie, Life, or the crime boss Emerald in the movie, You Got Served, starring B2K and Marcus Houston. Michael Telefero was born in Fort Worth, Texas before moving to West Palm Beach in his sophomore year of high school. He played football at Texas Christian University, then went on to play pro ball for the Washington Redskins in 1984. After his pro career, Michael moved to Southern California, where he was spotted on the street by film director Tony Scott, who offered him a role in his 1991 movie, The Last Boy Scott. He went on to have over a dozen acting roles in films like Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, Bad Boys, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, Life, and You Got Served. Maybe I ought to eat your cornbread. Most of Michael's roles revolved around being a big, scary, tough guy. But family and friends said he was nothing like any of the characters he played. He was nicknamed Teddy Bear because he was lovable and made people laugh. He directed the 2009 film Steppin, the movie, but he wouldn't live to see the film's release. On May 4th, 2006, Michael died in Los Angeles at age 44 after suffering a stroke, and he left behind four kids. The LGBT icon Corwin Hawkins is best known for his role of Peaches' gay best friend, Wei Min, in the 1994 comedy A Low Down Dirty Shame, or you may know him for his comedic impressions. Corwin Anthony Hawkins was born in Houston, Texas on March 12, 1965. He was a cheerleader in college and worked as a body double for Grace Jones's album covers and music videos. He started off doing drag shows in Dallas nightclubs and became a well-known comedian in the black comic world. He created many characters and did a lot of impersonations, but his most popular character was named Amazing Grace. He won many competitions as Amazing Grace, such as Miss Gay Texas, Texas Entertainer of the Year, and the 1992 National Entertainer of the Year title in Louisville, Kentucky. Corwin appeared on Dev Comedy Jam, BT's Comic View, and a bunch of HBO comedy specials. Oh, but you know what? When you go to Burger King tomorrow and I pull up in my Porsche, give me a burger, nigga. <laughs> what do you mean, Daddy? Yeah, my pussy ball. <laughs> In the early 90s, gay performers, especially the ones who did female impersonations, rarely got mainstream success. Corwin was spotted by Keenan Ivory Wayans, who offered him a part of Wayman in his film A Low Down Dirty Shame. The role was originally written for RuPaul. I've seen your room tonight. My, no, honey. Ain't nothing like coming to a warm man in the bed. Squeeze me, who am I? This is my room you dropped in last night. Miss Bates, you need to come up here and get this rock wilder. Keenan also cast him to be in his film, Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in a Hood. But unfortunately, Corwin Hawkins passed away of AIDS-related pneumonia on August 5th, 1994, three months before a low-down dirty shame hit the theaters, and never got the chance to film Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in a Hood. Corwin was just 29 years old, but he will always be recognized as an LGBT icon, and his memory is always honored every year during Pride Month. Michelle Thomas is best known for playing the role of Myra, Steve Urkel's girlfriend, in the 90s sitcom Family Matters. She was born in Boston, Massachusetts on September 23, 1968, and is the daughter of Dennis Thomas, the saxophonist and musical director of Cool and the Gang, and the actress Pinwar Thomas. She grew up in New Jersey and received her basic training in acting from her mother, Finwar, and her mother coached her throughout her career. In September 1984, she was crowned Miss Talented Teen New Jersey, and the following year, she became international queen in the international competition in Jamaica. 
She studied dance at the Broadway Dance Center in New York and starred in Betsy Brown at the American Music Theater Festival in Philadelphia. Michelle played the love interest in a lot of music videos, and then she played Theo's girlfriend Justine on The Cosby Show from 1988 to 1990. She had a few minor roles in shows throughout the 90s, but in 1983, Michelle got the role of Myra Monkhouse on Family Matters, a role she played for five years until the sitcom ended. In August 1997, Michelle was diagnosed with a rare stomach cancer and began treatment. After Family Matters, she portrayed Callie Rogers Stark on the American television soap opera, The Young and the Restless. But her screen time grew shorter and shorter as her cancer got worse, and she began her medical leave in late October 1998. Michelle Thomas died on Wednesday, December 23, 1998 at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in Manhattan at the age of 30 with her family and ex-boyfriend slash friend Malcolm Jamal Warner by her side. William J. Bell, the co-creator and senior executive producer of The Young and the Restless, released a statement that read, We are terribly shocked and deeply saddened by Michelle's death, and our thoughts and prayers are with her family. Michelle was a great talent with a bright future ahead of her. She will be missed by all of us. End quote. We live in an era now where people are just ferociously out to be a big deal. But there were still enough innocent characters in the 90s fame game who were just themselves, good people, everybody loved them, and they fell into this life. And Michelle Thomas is that for me. You know, um, I never had an intimate relationship with Michelle. She really was like a big sister to me. And um, Michelle Thomas was a part of my confidence building. And she made herself a part of that. And then our relationship just kind of blossomed from there. When the show went down, a lot of realities for a lot of us kicked in. And moving on as an actress, I think Michelle ran into some difficulty. And um, I remember even for a while she worked as a waitress and she would work way out like Palmdale because she didn't want anybody in LA seeing her have to wait tables. And then obviously she got stomach cancer and my mom really helped her tremendously as much as she could, but it was just too far along. And um, like I said, when you, when you know somebody's full journey, what they fought for, what they didn't ask other people for, what they didn't burden other people for, um, and that big just 34 teeth grin of hers. Um, <laughs> uh, you just, anytime I mention Michelle Thomas, I just, there's a certain amount of innocence. I'm just taken back to, you know, she wasn't, Michelle had a lot of opportunities to sell her soul to the devil to start climbing a little faster. And she just wasn't that girl. Most people know Lloyd Avery II as the gang member who shot and killed Morris Chestnut's character in Boys in the Hood. Lloyd Fernandez Avery was born on June 21, 1969. He is of African-American and Mexican descent. He grew up in a middle-class neighborhood in Los Angeles and attended Beverly Hills High School. He was cast in John Singleton's 1991 film, Boys in the Hood, to play a gang member named Knucklehead. John Singleton would cast him again alongside his brother Che in John's 1993 film, Poetic Justice. Look at his face, dude. That's not him. That's him, dude, I'm telling you, that's him. Lloyd would continue to be cast in movies throughout the 90s as a gangster in films like The Breaks, Lockdown, and the Wayans Brothers film Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. But despite the little fame he had as an actor, Lloyd seemed like he really wanted to live the life of the characters he often played on screen. He became gang affiliated and started living a violent life off screen. Then in 2001, right after he finished filming the movie Shot, 
Lloyd was arrested for a double homicide and sentenced to life in prison. On September 4, 2005, Lloyd Avery II was killed in his cell at Pelican Bay State Prison. He was murdered by his cellmate Kevin Roby, who was serving a life without parole sentence, and Kevin used his body for a satanic ritual. Lloyd's body wasn't found until two days later, lying on a pentagram his cellmate drew on the floor. There are some reports that allege that Lloyd found God while he was in prison and allegedly tried to convert his Satanist cellmate. His death is so sinister, so if you guys want to know more details about what happened, I'll leave a link in the description box for you guys to read about it yourselves. Now, Tara Correa McMullen isn't black, obviously, but the similarities between her real life and the characters she played on screen kind of reminded me of the life of Lloyd Avery II and his death. So I decided I was going to include her in this video. Tara Correa McMullen grew up on the East Coast and moved to Northern California in 1996 with her mother and sister. The family later moved to Venice, Los Angeles, where she sang in the Venice High School Choir and performed with local dance groups. They lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and her mother was working in the office of a casting company at the time, when casting officials expressed that they were having a hard time casting the role of the only girl on a boys' basketball team. That's when her mother suggested they cast Tara, since it sounded like she would fit the role. Tara played the role of Big Mac in the 2005 film Rebound, alongside Martin Lawrence. Academically in the Academically ineligible. That's what I said. Academically illegible. I'm illegible. After filming Wrapped, she scored a recurring role on the CBS show Judge and Amy, playing the role of a troubled teen who was gang affiliated. And in the end, her character was murdered in prison by a gang rival. She also had a small role on one episode of the Nickelodeon series Zoe 101 that year. But halfway through filming for her role on Judging Amy, Tara became unreliable and wasn't showing up on time for shoots. Her talent agency staff started driving her to and from the shoots to make sure she showed up, but the agency eventually dropped her as a client. They gave her a second chance after she told them that she wanted to take acting seriously. But when she missed an audition, the agency dropped her for a second time. Family and friends said that Tara had been hanging out with a bad crowd in Inglewood. Her mother had been trying to get her to move to Glendale with her. But Tara wanted to stay in Inglewood with her gang member boyfriend with a prison record who was also 10 years older than her. Her friend Maurice Tipton knew something was up with her when she missed his birthday. He said, and she showed up the next day at my front door and she had on all red and her face was kind of beat up and she told me she had got put on by the gang the day before and she had it tattooed on her chest. On October 21st, 2005, Tara was hanging out with friends and her boyfriend in front of his apartment complex in Inglewood when she was fatally shot. Police described her as the innocent victim of a gang-related shooting. Tara Correa McMullen died at the hospital less than three hours later at 16 years old. Most people remember Wiley Draper as the actor who played adult Michael Jackson in the 1992 TV movie, The Jacksons, An American Dream. Wiley Draper was born on May 5, 1969 in West Virginia. He was known as a great dancer during his childhood, but as a teenager, he focused more on football. He attended Point Park College and started focusing on dance again and the arts and had taken some acting classes, but hadn't done any acting gigs yet. After college, he worked as a dancer at Disney World as a stage dancer for the Norwegian Cruise Line. Casting for a biopic based on Katherine Jackson's My Family autobiography began in 1991, and the entire Jackson family, including Katherine and Joseph, had to approve all actors. Michael Jackson also had to approve all three actors that played him. But finding an actor to play Michael in the adult stage was a challenge. A casting director in Pittsburgh, who personally knew Wiley, recommended him to the movie director, Karen Arthur. When he came into audition to play Michael, Catherine started crying, and he got the part. Wiley was personally invited by Michael himself to dance in the music video for Remember the Time. 38 million people tuned in to watch the special, The Jacksons, An American Dream, on ABC on November 5th through November 18th, 1992 
and the program won an Emmy Award for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Choreography. And we, when we go in the studio rehearse with Micah Peters, it's just like, get down, let's do this, baby. And so when, 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 it, when she says action, it's action. And then, like, of course, a lot of people all over the, the world is going to be watching this. I don't get obsessed because, you know, they put the makeup on and put my hair like Michael and everything. I'm pretty much Wally Draper. When I put my costume on, when I put my makeup on, I go in and I'm still Wally Draper until she says action. And then I capture the moment on the road. When she says cut, I'm back to Wally Draper. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I mean, that was good. How did I go, Karen? Is that all right? After that, he had a small role in The Disappearance of Christina and another appearance as a dancer in the cable show The Red Shoe Diaries. But he would not live to be able to see the show air. In 1993, Wiley was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia and died on December 20th, 1993 in Los Angeles, California at the age of 24. A year after his death, his family established the Wiley Draper Foundation to support young artists through an annual memorial scholarship in Wiley's memory. And it also raises awareness for bone marrow donations. Natina Reed is best known as one third of the R&B group Black, or some of you may know her as one of the East Compton Clovers in the 2000 film Bring It On. Natina was born in New York City and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and is the cousin of Farrah Franklin of Destiny's Child. She was discovered by Lisa Left Eye Lopez of TLC through her brother, and Lisa would help her with her career and even asked her to co-write songs for TLC. Lisa put together the trio named Black consisting of Natina and singers Shamari Fears and Brandy Williams, and they began touring with TLC. Black achieved success with their hits 808 and Bring It All To Me, which featured NSYNC's J.C. Chazé. In the year 2000, the trio appeared together in the cheerleading film Bring It On as members of the East Compton Clovers led by Gabrielle Union's character Isis. Can we just beat these buffies down so I can go home? I'm on curfew, girl. Look, there's no need for that. Oh, you know what? Yo, yo, let me explain this to you. A year later, Black did a cameo in one episode of the series VIP and again in the 2003 dance film Honey. After that, Black faded into obscurity, but Natina made headlines for a few arrests, allegedly including a DUI, possession, and disorderly conduct. On October 26, 2012, she was in the road on the Lawrenceville Highway in Georgia when she was struck by a car. The driver and the passenger attempted CPR, but Natina was pronounced dead at the Gwinnett Medical Center at the age of 31, just two days before her 32nd birthday. Authorities in Georgia have never been able to determine exactly why she was standing in the middle of the road and ruled that the driver who struck her was not at fault and no charges were filed. Natina Reed left behind a 10-year-old son. Did I shock you with any of the names on this list? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.